Stokers of Stoke Nation, give it to me and say, give me some sour gummies. Uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I'm here my, with my compadre, Jean Thomas. What up? What up, Stokers? Boom, clap. And uh, guys, before we begin, we want to remind you that we are once again brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped, thank you so much for keeping our trims pubed, for keeping our hogs safe, for keeping them in the hog pen, but making sure that any of the alfalfa is not strewn about in a messy way because we want to keep it trimmed we want to keep it nice and clean we want to make sure that when people come across your hog they see something that is well maintained well executed like a armani suit with pubes so guys use code oh there's a new code what's the new code uh we got the updated promo code because our promo code got leaked and i don't know how, what that means but I'm stoked on it. And our new promo code is go deep 20 go deep 20 So keep your trims peeled with go deep 20 And uh, I got JT with a fire sweatsuit going on right now. You yeah, no, I'm, a, I'm a 80s aerobics instructor. You're not Jane Fonda anymore? I'm, or I'm Jane Fonda, but I think she yeah. did that. Yeah, um, you were supposed to dress up as well. I know, I forgot. I, I totally, <laughs> I was so... Uh, I was so disturbed by the Joker that I forgot to get festive. Dude, took you to a bleak place. I had to call my mom after. You did? Yeah. What'd she say? She was like, uh, just stay stoked. Um, go get some you know, avocado or something and just uh, watch something that'll bring up your mood. So she, you watch, I, I can always count on her to- She's the best. Yeah. That's good advice. So I just watched Arnold Schwarzenegger lifting. Like nice, things. dude. Yeah. Yeah. Just got me back in the mood. Yeah, so the Joker, what'd you think about it? Um, you know, it was uh, well done, well shot. Uh, the score was great, I thought. Joaquin is excellent, but really not my cup of tea. Uh, you know, the legend Paul Schrader says that art is a tool that helps you learn about yourself and other people. And what I learned about myself is that I love Stoke. So this is kind of the opposite for me. Dude, that's crazy, because you quote Paul Schrader too, is probably most legendary film is Taxi Driver, which right. the Joker is like heavily indebted to. Yeah, it felt it felt like a Taxi Driver with a huge budget, but way more predictable. Right. Um, just, I'm, I'm with you, I didn't like it either. Yeah, it just felt like you, you kind of knew where, where it was going. A lot of the stuff that they, I think they intended to make sort of like a, a surprise or something like, if spoiler alert, that he was like delusional about the There's girlfriend. gonna be a lot of spoilers, so if you're not into it, yeah, start skipping forward. Yeah, the uh, like the girlfriend or whatever that she wasn't that that whole thing wasn't real. It's like you yeah. could see that a mile away. Right. Um, yeah, I thought I thought it was impressive, and it's crazy that they made a big budget movie like that right. about something so sad. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't generally see that. Yeah, like like just telling a story about a, a psychopath and really getting into like yeah, what no, his world nothing is good like. ever happens. Right, but he's. The thing is, it's it doesn't feel like a descent into being a psychopath because he kind of feels like a crazy person from the beginning. Yeah, like you don't you're like the moment you look at him, you're like, yeah, this guy's got no shot. Yeah, and then so him going crazy, I was like, well, he is. I mean, he brought a gun to a. I know he got beat up, but like he brings a gun to like a children's hospital. Like he's yeah. kind of nuts. He already is crazy. He's crazy. It's more like he's taking off his mask. Yeah, and then like there was just some parts that I thought were poorly written, like when he confronts who he thinks is his dad, Bruce Wayne's dad. Mm -hmm. uh, what's Bruce Wayne's dad's name? Thomas. Uh, Thomas Wayne. Thomas Wayne. When he confronts him in the bathroom and Thomas is like a total cock about it. Right. He's like, you're my dad. He's like, no, I'm not. You're a loser. And yeah. then he socks him in the face. He's like, listen, your mom's crazy. I never slept with her. And if you come here and get my kid again, I'm going to fucking kill you. Yeah. And he's it's like, like, that's how you <laughs> yeah, call the bodyguard. I'm yeah. Like, if there was a psychopath confronting <laughs> me in the bathroom, yeah. I wouldn't be like hyper masculine <laughs> and cocky. But I'd be like, listen, loser, <laughs> yeah. you better beat it. And then smack him in the face. Yeah. I'd be like, okay, hey, whatever you say, man, I am your dad and I love you. And I'm so proud of you. And then I'd yeah. get out the door and be like, security, execute this dude. Yeah. You're just taking a piss in this <laughs> psychopath there. First off, I'd get pee shy. Yeah. I'm like, can you not look at me? Cause I'm trying to pee. And second off, he's just like washing his hands. He's like, 
Oh, your mother? <laughs> she was crazy. I never slept with her. And <laughs> yeah, you're like, yeah. all right, dude. Yeah. By the way, you've got the mangled looks of her. You're like, all right, dude. Like, yeah. wouldn't you be a little bit like more like chill, chill? Yeah. He's, oh, you're the guy that came to my house. All right. Let me handle this. And then it was like, I thought they should have just kept up the ambiguity, whether it was his dad or not. And mm. And like, once you find out that his mom lied to him mm. and that he just is crazy, it took away a lot of the like power for me. Cause I right. thought a lot of the power would be in like, is he crazy? Is he not crazy? But they kind of very much settle it on the side of he's just nuts. Yeah. There's like really no chance for redemption yeah. or like there's no opportunities for him to sort of break free. From, it's like, you know where he's going the whole time. Uh, it, it's just predictable. And, and like I read some reviews and they're like, uh, New York Times is like besotted with the notion of its own audacity as if willful unpleasantness were a form of artistic courage the film turns out to be afraid of its own shadow or at least the faintest shadow of any relevance I don't really know what that means but I think that's what I felt Dude, that was while perfect. watching it that so well encapsulates right what that movie is yeah because it, it thinks because it's so intense that it's like deep but it's yeah. not it's not really saying much yeah it felt like arrogant yeah a and I love Todd Phillips. Don't give me. And like, I love I love Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah, but it was just like full of itself. Like this is the Joker. Cue the big score. <laughs> and Strider made a good point too, where he was like, the thing about Joaquin Phoenix's performances, it's amazing. But we've seen him be intense and very committed in other performances. Mm -hmm. So it's not as like shocking as Heath Ledger as the right. Joker because yeah. we've never seen him do anything like that. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. With this, it's like yeah, that's Joaquin Phoenix. He's amazing at being yeah. creepy and weird and compelling but yeah. but it's not like it's not I don't think it's unique in his oeuvre yeah but he should do like road trip next something like that yeah if he did something light yeah that would be shocking yeah if he was just like a charming like uh, lead in a rom-com yeah like him and Catherine Heigl yeah they're like dueling newscasters yeah and it's hard for me to talk poorly about it because I love Todd Phillips I love Joaquin uh, we already covered that but you know, I just, uh, and plus, it's just so bleak. Uh, I just, and I guess it's supposed to make you uncomfortable, but it just, it wasn't like, I was like blown away. I was like, this is disturbing, but you know, it's really blowing my mind. It's like, you know, this is kind of what I expected. But, and he goes, Joker's so monotonously grandiose and full of its own pretensions that winds up feeling puny and predictable. Nice, this guy really fucking gave it a scathing review. That was a different one. Oh, whoa. What was that one? I uh, I forget what that one was. What'd you think, Aaron? Dude, I liked it. Oh, <laughs> oh dude. dude, we needed that. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it a lot. I thought it was a unique take. I thought the acting was really good. I'm, I'm behooved to, to speak to this side of things. Yeah, I'm yeah. fired up on that word behooved. Yeah. I've been trying to look for situations to say the word bequeath. Yeah? I just like bequeath. You got to hang around more people who are about to die, dude. I bequeath unto yeah. you. Be like, so what are you going to do with your stuff? Do you think you're going to bequeath it to anybody? Yeah. I bequeath unto you my tank top. Or you could go to a yard sale and be like, hey, how much for that lava lamp? And they're like 20 bucks. You're like, how much you just bequeath it to me? Dude, actually, well, I'm, I'm moving soon. So maybe I'll uh, I'll bequeath uh, my running shoes to the gym I currently work out at. I'll just bequeath it to them and then they'll be stoked and I'll get new ones. Fuck yeah, dude. You're just going to give them shoes? Just uh, as like a token of my appreciation. Are they going to give them to other people? Or they're just going to hold on to them and be like, oh, dude. I'm hoping they'll put them in a case and just say like, Chad sprinted here. Dude. Not that I want to be all like Showy super import self-important or nice whatever, though. but you know, I just, the treadmills there have done me well and I'm stoked on them. And uh, I think Crunch, um, maybe I'll take some of their memorabilia and put it in a case in my B room or something. Dude, also, so on Saturday, we went to um, a famous person's Halloween party. Yeah, we signed an NDA, so we can't say. Wait, we can't say we went to the party? We can say we went to the party. We can just you? can't say what we saw. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, because people were posting about it. Oh, uh, okay. We went to Demi Lovato's Halloween party, and I showed up first. Yeah. I was yeah. the first person there. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, you were like, <laughs> I showed up super, <laughs> dude, I was, party started at seven. I was there at seven. Yeah, you're like, dude, I am going to get there at 7 right when it opens. I don't want to have any headaches getting in. I'm like, I'm going to show up at 8.45. Well, we've been to some of these parties before. It's impossible yeah. to get in at a certain hour. I was like, yeah. I'm not I'm not a big deal. I'm not taking chances. Yeah. And I had a plus one. Yeah. And they had, the, they had it kind of misaccurately, misaccurately written down. So I think if I had come later with our buddy Dan, I wouldn't have been able to get in. Yeah. 
but I got to meet Demi because I was there early and she came up and I was like, what's up? But she was in like a full Pennywise outfit. Mm -hmm. She was nice. She was very yeah. normal. Yeah. Like I was like, whoa, you're like just like a regular person. Yeah. 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 It's weird how that happens. Yeah. They're like, you know, I may be Pennywise right now, but I have feelings. And I got fucked up, dude. I haven't been yeah. that drunk in a while. You, you were really bringing it. I was bringing it, dude. Yeah. I, was, I think I was trying to prove something to Dan because it was my first time partying with him. Yeah. And then I think I was trying to prove something to myself. <laughs> trying yeah. to prove something to everyone there. Well, yeah. I, I felt like this energy. I was like, JT's on a mission tonight. Yeah, I was. Yeah. I talked to every single person at the party, and I danced like I was going to power a nuclear reactor with my fucking hip gyrations. We were, we do, we were tearing it up. I mean, yeah. I, with that dinosaur, with that dino costume, that thing is ripe for hip movement and just jiving. It's like another partner on the floor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like you want to do the T Rex justice, um, and uh, it just it looks amazing when you dance with that thing. Yeah, you know, because there it's just, it's just a mind trip. You're like, who's really dancing? Is it Chad or is it that Dino? And I'm like, you'll never know, dude. Right, you're communicating through the Dino. Right, right. Yeah, I smoke fun. cigarettes. I haven't smoked cigarettes in years. Yeah, I smoked six of them. You were chiefing. I get it, because it gives you like. You, you don't want to stay inside the party. It was at a club called Hyde. You don't want to stay in the club for too long. And then you have a reason to go outside. You smoke yeah. a cigarette and you're like, all right, let's get back in there. Yeah. You know, it does make sense for like, uh, for setting the tempo. It's something to do. But man, that hangover. Yeah. S splitting headache for two days. <laughs> Dude, when I was there too, I, uh, I ate a garlic hamburger and <laughs> I was like, the, the food they had was all garlicky. But yeah, you were hungover. Yeah, I'm sorry. Because we had some work, and I was yeah. like coming in. I was like, "What's up, dude? Yeah. I'm fucking fucked, bro." Well, you weren't that. I mean, maybe you felt bad on Monday. You weren't, but you weren't that. You didn't seem that bad. But oh, that's then on good. Tuesday, I was like, "There's like a dark cloud hanging over you." I was like, "I thought you were like upset." I was like, "What's going on?" No, dude? I felt upset, but it yeah. was just a hangover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was rubbing my head like, like I literally was just massaging my head. Yeah. I, yeah, I got into a fight with Sally, like, because yeah. I was, like, so just grumpy. Like, I just yeah. made a joke, and on any other day, it just would have landed. Yeah. Maybe. But uh, it came across, like, more, like, acidic. Mm. And, like, she got a little upset. And I was like, I was like, babe, I swear, it's just because I'm so fucking hungover. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, yeah, and you were just housing cereal stuff i ate three bowls of cereal dude yeah it's very uncharacteristic i don't eat cereal i haven't had cereal in 15 years dude my stomach was lit up bro i'm yeah. not doing that again for a while I, I might take a bigger break from milk and cereal than i do from drinking yeah dude i um i know that about myself because sometimes i'll just get cinnamon toast crunch and like a gallon of milk and just house it in one night and then i'm just like freaking a balloon of gas for like yeah. two days and um I'm thinking after we're done with this thing that we're working on, I think what I'll treat myself to is like a huge box of cinnamon toast crunch. Maybe we should talk about that too. That's gonna be good. I'll yeah. just, I, I'd love to get some French toast crunch right next to you. Oh, dude, yeah. Just split a dude. Get a when you get a big bowl and you just pour the oh, whole cereal into it gets, there. I love when it gets soggy. I love the soggy. There's like yeah. a perfect soggy level. Yeah. yeah. I love soggy stuff. And then you chug that sugar milk. Yeah. One of the great pleasures. I kind of like food that's like been out for a while you know what i mean yeah when it's kind of soggy like people always clown on me they're like you're gonna you're like it's cold you're gonna eat that like that's been out for a while i'm like it's soggy and the texture is just right i think with dishes where the food like coagulates it's the yeah. best like mac and cheese or yeah. rice when it's mixed with other things yeah when it gets that sticky kind of quality to yeah. it that's when it's the best for pounding yeah i <laughs> do if you get like a caesar salad and you let the croutons just you know, uh, become one with the dressing. Yeah, I don't want them at full crunchiness. No. You're like chipping teeth. Yeah, it's too hard. It's way too hard. Yeah. What's your favorite cereal, Aaron? Uh, you know, I've been getting into Cinnamon Toast Crunch lately. It's good oh, nice. stuff. Uh, have you but, tried French Toast Crunch? No, no. They have a Cinnamon Toast Crunch uh, churros as well. A full CTCC. I've heard about those. That sounds pretty intense. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, but, I, you know, I like my classic frosted flakes did you know what i like chocolate rice krispies is that what it's called rice krispies yeah 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 or cocoa krispies cocoa, cocoa krispies. krispies thank oh, you aaron yeah. cocoa krispies you got more than cocoa puffs yes yes Whoa. because please they got this new they got this unique kind of flavor to them 
Cocoa Crisp, where the Cocoa Puffs are kind of predictable, I think. But these, they get soggy fast. They have this like cool, like I don't even know how to describe I think you're chocolate. Right, dude. To them, right? No, you're but you're yeah. hitting on what I'm thinking. It's like yeah. extra milky chocolate. Yeah, that's what it is. That it's extra milk. And when it's got that kind of like that soft texture that you can just kind of like just put your tongue through. Yeah, yeah. If you follow. Yeah. yeah. Dude, you know what kind of cereal I like? Uh, what's that? After I do a bunch of fucking blow, bro. Uh, yeah. What? I like Fruit Loops, bro. Tricks. That's what I like is tricks. My brain got confused for a second. So not because I haven't done blow in a while. I've been taking a little break, so I can build up for a massive fucking blow sesh. Is it the bunny that you get fired up on the bunny? Dude, I eat my fucking tricks and I look at the bunny and I just laugh for about an hour. I'm like, <laughs> you're stuck in a box, bunny. Yeah, I mean. Not to have shot in foot, but I know that bunny would rather be in a patch somewhere rather than stuck peddling sugary goop to a fucking cokehead like me, even though I'm the fucking man. I just know that that rabbit's probably got aspirations, dreams, you know? And I kind of laugh at it because I'm living out my dreams. Mm. And this rabbit's stuck. He's stuck. Honestly, I have all the cereal mascots. I think he's the one who looks like he's most on blow. And he made whatever he made because he got of that. stuck there yeah yeah they, they sentenced him to that yeah to peddling to peddling yeah. the sugar bites yeah yeah that's probably true when i think in terms of freedom of the people who are in cereal boxes i think count trocula i think he's living life exactly the way he wants to he does blow yeah i think the lucky charms guy he's a lot of fun lots of blow yeah. i haven't partied with those guys yet per se but i uh i can tell by looking at them that they get after it mm. i'll tell you who's not doing blow i'll tell you who's in na Narcotics Anonymous, Narcotics Assholes, is uh, the Kashi guys. Oh, for real? They don't even have a mascot. They got like some healthy looking like twig. And you seen them there? No, I haven't seen them there, but they, they got that kind of like uh, better than now, holier than you kind of attitude, you know? Yeah, I mean, for sure. I mean, Kashi Goleen, that's quite a phrase to to come out, come out with. And you know what the worst part is? The hypocrites. All the Kashi people, all the people who make Kashi are hypocrites. Because... You, you, you pretend you're healthy for me, but guess what? Yeah, you got some fiber, but it doesn't matter if you got 40 grams of carbohydrates and 20 grams of sugar. I mean, what the hell are we talking about? You know what makes you actually go lean? What's that? You know what it is. Keto, baby. Blow. Oh, dude. I can't believe I didn't get that one right. Yeah. That's fucking crazy. That went over my head. I don't even do blow, and I just know. I'm just your intern. It keeps me lean, bro, for sure. Bro, intern? Yeah, but you're the CEO of the interns. Oh, dude, thank you so much. Chief Executive Ox, bro. You're built, dude. You're strong. Oh, dude, thank you. Well, I just, I actually, I was coming in today because I was like, you know, I, I love talking about cereal. Me too, bro. I'll um, go all day. I love talking about anything, really. Deep dives. Dude, what about the Frosted Flakes tiger? Oh, ho, 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 ho. Yeah, that, that Kellogg, guy, that guy? That guy does blow, right? I mean, he's kind of the old stalwart. You know, he's been there for a while, holding it down. Yeah. To be honest, I think he's getting a little long in the tooth. Pun intended. I think he's ready to fall. And I think if you put me in a ring with him, and I got a bump ski, and you know, I've been working out, and I'm keeping shit tight, I'm gonna put him down. You could be his ass? I'm gonna work my jab. He's a tiger. He's probably not used to being jabbed. You know, he's gonna come back with some paws, but I see him coming up on his hind legs, coming at me with the front paws. Maybe even trying to bring his, his big teeth onto my throat. I mean, that's ripe for a body shot. I mean, that's when I throw a left to the fucking, to the liver, and I put a tiger down. Have you ever fought a tiger? Yeah, 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 I have. I went on a safari uh, in uh, the Congo. Yeah, and uh, I was out there with some friends, and uh, this tiger was just talking shit. You know, he's like, rah, rah, rah. And I said, shut the fuck up, tiger. Not in front of my, he's disrespecting me in front of my friends. Which I have a nice time looking at the wilderness, and so I said, "Not," I said, "Enough." You know, I'll give you, I'll give you a break this one time because I'm in, I'm in your country. But after this, you know, bullshit talks. My fist walks, and uh, and uh, he kept talking, you know, because he didn't understand me. Because I guess he's a tiger, but I understood him, and it's a two-way street. So then I hopped out of the fucking jeep, and you know, everybody there was like, "Hey, don't do this. Come on, what are you doing?" I said, "Stay, stay out of it," you know. Because I don't bother them when they're fighting, you know, with their families or whatever. They don't fight that much. But if they did, I wouldn't butt in. And then so I go over there and I said, the Tiger, hey, look at me in my eyes. Look at me in my eyes. And I did a little coke. I offered the Tiger some coke. He didn't do it. What? He didn't do it. Damn. Blatant disrespect. Yeah. So even worse than that, he doesn't do the blow. 
he hits he hits my hand with his paw and wastes like three bumps. Dude, he wasted the blow? Bro. Tell Bro. me what happened next. You know what happened next. How'd you beat his ass? First, I took my shirt off real slow. You're so jacked, too. And I just way. pierced my nipples, right? Yeah, I love your piercing. So nipples. I was looking fierce. Yeah. And then I freaking, I hit him with a fucking flying pelvic thrust. Yeah. You hit him with your hog? I hit him with my hog. Damn, dude. And I'm not going to embellish. I didn't knock him out clean right there. I just wobbled him. Was it like, did you have like a half chub or like, was it just totally flaccid? Is it that kind of hard of a hog? Well, I'm one of those guys who can do all the blow in the world and it does affect my penis. I can't get hard. Mm. So I wasn't hard. So maybe your balls did most of the work? My balls did the heavy lifting. You yeah. do have a huge bulge in sack. Thanks, dude. Yeah, I got a nice piece. I wish it would get up there more, but I'm doing so much blow, it's kind of hard. But I don't mind going down on whoever I'm partying with for as long as they need, you know? Because when I'm on coke, I'm a giver, dude. Yeah. And that's what I tell everybody at the office. I get on the PA system and I say, never forget. Yeah. Boss man's a giver. Yeah. And we're all going to be given. When we get the next quarter's earnings and everybody's happy, I want everybody to be given because we're grateful. We're grateful. And I'm always grateful. And that's why even after I knocked the tiger out with a roundhouse kick, I woke him up. I said, hey, good on you, bro, for taking it like a man, tiger. And then I gave him a little pouch of the blow ski when his wife. I guess that makes sense. I mean, in the last moment, you were talking all about the importance of having a, a solid bean bag. Yeah. And uh, just making sure your nuts are in check. And now I get it. Yeah, you do, Because you can knock out a tiger with a good set of nuts. I can see that in your eyes that you get it too, man. That yeah. means a lot to me. Um, that's okay. why you're chief executive officer. That's why you're doing such a good job here, man. And Thanks. everybody's really thrilled with how you've been performing. Well, that's that's actually why I'm here. I was wondering. What were you wondering? Is that below? Yeah, I cut you a line there. Should I do it right now? Do it, please. Well, basically, I For was. trust. I was a... Whoa. Oh, dude. I didn't see a hungry, hungry hippo on that uh, safari I was on. Whoa, dude. Oh. Hey, oh, you got a nice tone to your voice. Have you seen my sack, dude? Oh, let me see your nuts, kid. You want to see him? Yes, please. All right, let me Thank you very it. much. Ta-da. Dude. Beauty, right? Yeah, bro. Where'd you get those? I'm almost proud of the fact that I don't even have a long shaft so it can accentuate my balls. Very smart, dude. Very yeah. smart. Yeah. Thank God for that average shaft. I'll put you at average. Yeah. Because it really... Sets the table for those beautiful balls. Yeah. And I knew you had nice nuts the moment I hired you. I know I have nice nuts. I knew you had nice nuts the moment I hired you. I told everybody. We had an office meeting. They said, why are you hiring this guy? I said, he's got nice nuts. How's that, how's that sound? You know, how's that sound? I went everybody to... was a little freaked out. I said, listen, listen, listen. I know it sounds weird, but I know what nuts can do. I, you know, that's why I went to my mama one day. I was like, mama, thank you so much for giving me a thumbtack for a cock. Because it accentuates my balls. I, it accentuates my balls, ma. The family jewels, ma. That's the mojo you got in your freaking testicles. That's beautiful, dude. And I got a freaking thumbtack for a cock, and the ladies love it. That's awesome, dude. Thanks. That's really awesome. The ladies do love it. You know why? You know why I know? Because what? I see it in your eyes. I see in your eyes how happy you're making people, and that makes me happy, dude. Thank you, dude. With whatever God gave you. Thank you. And God gave it to you. Thank you. And I'm going to give God something when I see him. Tell me. As a bump. A blow? A blow. And I'm going to say, God, you've been doing a great job, but the party's about to get turned up. I wonder, you know, God made blow, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. So Without think, a doubt. I think getting offered his own blow, that's something that no one else has done before. They say you can't take it with you. They don't know how good I am at hiding things. Yeah. I'm taking it with me. Up your butt. Bye-bye. All right. It's good stuff, man. Um, what else is cracking? Um, oh, dude, we watched a video about a guy who would be oh, good yeah. friends with the tough guy. <laughs> yeah. The Miami guy, Vice. I've, I've been looking at Vice videos lately because that's where we found the one about a, like the China information collectors and how a, a society built on uh, people uh, keeping like uh, surveilling each other, basically. And now they had a video about this guy who's the most Miami guy ever. His name's Anwar. He's a former model and picture framer. And he loves Miami. And he does all the things a Miami guy should do. Yeah. 
Looks like he does lots of drugs and he sleeps with lots of people. I love how he fires off the video with a, um, he's like, you know, people always ask me this question. What, uh, what's what the, makes a house a home? No, 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 no about one? Miami. He's like, what makes you so Miami? And he's like, I know, and I always, and I always say the same question. I am Miami. Right. I'm like, that's not a question. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> he was a his voice was really weird. Yeah, I'd have to listen to, the, to get his voice right. And yeah. I love in the comments, they're like, this guy's done so much blow, he can't even talk anymore. <laughs> that's really what it sounds like. And he's framing other people. <laughs> First million dollars. I bought that car. I bought the car, yeah. What I believe that changes a house to a home is to have all these little memories. It's not really a home until it doesn't tell a story. My career. <laughs> I do like what he says there. It's not really a home if it doesn't tell a story. Right. That yeah. is a pretty romantic way to think about, you know, decorating your place. He does seem to have an incredible life story. He here's one of the best stories that he tells on the whole thing about a, uh, a powerful horse. You know, this horse is a complete maniac. He was the son of the world champion. The horse got up in two legs like that, and a kid, well, I got him a kid, but he was like six foot tall, but he was like, what, 17 years old. And it was hitting him in the head with a cloth. And I knocked the horse out. I punched him in the head and grabbed him from the ring, and he went to the floor. And I knocked the horse out. Maybe that's where I had the tough guy inspiration because he's talking think, about knocking out a horse. Yeah, that was just. When you're talking, yeah, about, talking about that, I was like, "You knocked the tiger out." Oh, yeah, knocked the tiger out. Oh Abe, yeah. Abe tells that to everyone who comes into his house. It's such a great story because you just never see it going there. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, so his horse was jumping around, so I knocked it out. He gets yeah. there so quickly too. Yeah. He's like, "Oh, hey, horse, you got to calm down a little bit," and then I punch it square in the face. He gets a little bleak towards the end when he. No, nah, that's great. I love when he's trying to be all cautious, you know, they're like, so what, uh, how many people have you slept with in your bedroom? He's like, oh, whoa, 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 I'm, are you gonna make me out to be please. like a playboy or something? You can make me sound like a playboy. I can only handle one at a time. Okay, so I made this jacuzzi that fits 10 people and then the shower that can fa shower five ladies at a time. Yeah, and he's like smart enough to be modest. Yeah. yeah, but he can't keep it up for more than like two sentences. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's like, no, I'm no prince. I'm no king. I don't sleep with a lot of people. Here's my throne though. Check it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's a character. I do love his uh, sen sentiments on Miami. Uh, he's like, well, why would you live anywhere else? You it's a good question. And yeah, I'm, I, I get it. Um, Miami yeah. guys, they're just not pretending. Yeah. yeah, they're like, this is exactly what I want. <laughs> they're like, social norms be fucked. <laughs> I'm not pretending for anyone. My whole family's somewhere else. Yeah. I'm doing it for me from <laughs> now on. It's time for my bath. It, 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 uh, dude, I told a story last week about, or a couple weeks ago about Sly Stallone and Richard Gere getting in a fight over Princess Di Diana. Uh -huh. And uh, someone asked Sly about it on his Instagram, and he said it was a lie that Richard Gere made up to sell books. Oh, really? He goes, total total nonsense, made up to sell books. That's funny. Who what do you think? I believe Richard Gere. <laughs> <laughs> of course Sly doesn't like the story. He loses out on the chick and, yeah. and on the gal, and then uh, they say him and Richard Gere fought, and it, it, it doesn't say who the winner was, but yeah. you would assume Sly would win. So if it's a tie, I give the tie goes to, to Gere yeah. for just surviving. Man, it would be funny if these guys reacted to this stuff in like a they go low kind of way. Not not in a bad way, but they're just like, yeah, dude, Richard, you freaking won, dude. I suck. Yeah, that would be if, the better move. If Sly said that, he'd be like, yeah, dude, that was hilarious. Totally lost. He was boning her. Sorry, Prince Diana, not to disrespect, but. But dude, that would be a much more likable route if he was yeah. like, oh yeah, he for sure got the best of me that night. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you yeah. win some, you lose some. Yeah. But she was really elegant and he was always debonair. Yeah. I'd be like, wow, Sly's a pretty cool guy. Yeah, yeah. he's like pointing to the book. He's like, stoked on the zinger by Richard Gere. <laughs> Gear gets me good in chapter 27. <laughs> Check it out, guys. Yeah. Maybe he was like married at the time or something and that's why he's like downplaying it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what, were you going to say something about the Miami guy though? No, I'm done with Miami guy. Miami guy. What do you think about Miami guy, Aaron? He reminds me a little bit of uh, Tommy Wiseau from The Room. Right. Oh, hey, yeah. Good, call. good comp. Yeah. Same kind of hair, except he has a slick ponytail. And they're both from like a place that I can't pinpoint, you know? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've uh, waited on 
Tommy Wiseau once and he has like a a little like early 90s Mercedes like just that slick Euro car yeah, <laughs> yeah. was it what was he like uh he's pretty quiet you know you just kind of catch a little bit of that accent and it's fun to mess around with later mm-hmm. for sure dude uh last night i fired up uh some asmr videos got the tingles going yeah um i used to be kind of very uh asmr is what is it it's a uh, auto sensory meridian response i believe it's uh, this feeling you get when you hear certain certain people, their brains are wired. I don't know if I've talked about it in the pod before, but their brains are wired, so when they hear certain sounds, it gives this orgasmic, tingly sensation in your whole body. It, like, starts in your head. So, like, I'll be watching videos of, like, you know, people just eating fettuccine Alfredo with the mic super loud, and it just, it's orgasmic. That's your favorite, the fettuccine Alfredo. Yeah, there's something about the fettuccine. What is it? Uh, just the chewing. The smacky smack of yeah. it. Yeah. It's really weird, dude. When my roommate walks in, he's like, what are you doing, dude? I'm like, oh, uh, Starla is uh, telling me about her Olive Garden experience. Can I try to give you ASMR right now? Yeah, yeah. Try and make me tingle. No, you got to do like whispers or like I'm chewing. Okay. Um, so the other night I watched this movie, Parasite. It's a Korean film. I forget the name of the director. It's a really insightful look at class which is very rare in American cinema, so I was happy to watch it. I liked how the characters all came from different Dude, you're classes. close. Really? You're close, Am yeah. I giving you tingles? Yeah, it's like right there. I'm talking about the film Parasite, guys. I think it's the best movie of the year. I would definitely check it out. Can I try a little bit more? Yeah. Just tell me if it's not working for you, but I'd really love it to work. I don't think there'd be anything more fun than giving my dog the tingles. <laughs> and the thing that I really enjoyed about the film also was that no matter who the character was, they both had some good and bad in them. Like yeah, I'm sorry. Damn, I lost it. You know, I get to you know we'll wrapped up talking about the movie. Typing. Oh, typing. Yeah. All right. Do some typing. Slower. No, I think fast. Hard. Harder. Type harder. I can't. I'm gonna break my computer. I'm no. hitting this thing with anvil. I, I think when we're we're forcing it. Is it got to be in private? You gotta let it happen. Yeah, that's the thing, right? Mm-hmm. You can't just like it's, it, and you're in a vulnerable spot. We're being filmed and recorded right now. Yeah, yeah. What 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 happens to you when you go to your spot? Uh, it's just like very relaxing and just kind of. I, I would have it as a kid, and I didn't realize what it was. And there's a whole YouTube like some of these vi- these videos. They have like millions of views. So yeah. There's a whole like hidden ASMR community. Um, but as a kid, I would hear you know people talk or like eating chips or something and i'd be like why does that feel so good you know it is it, nice that it was like for generations like yeah there wasn't a community and now y'all are coming together yeah because i just thought that was weird i was like i was like i guess i'm the only one who likes when people eat chips but now it's like a whole i need to reach out to some dude maybe some stokers have the same thing aaron do you have asmr i i mean i know i definitely did as a kid but, but you lost it like the Polar Express. You can't hear that dog whistle anymore. <laughs> it might be it. I don't know. It's still inside <laughs> of you, dude. Yeah. Can Can Chad and I both try to make you tingle right now? I mean, I'd rather it be a lady. Oh, come on, <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> Open your mind, bro. I look like a lady sometimes. Sometimes. Aaron, I think you're really going to like what we're doing here. The Cardinals should have won the World Series. I definitely think the Cardinals should have won the World All Series. All right, that's working. That's working. Yeah, yeah dude. The Cardinals should Similar, similar Dude. color schemes of the two. So, yeah, I think that's true. That'd be a good way if I ever had to say something like really bad news to you. I just ASMR it, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. I'd be like, Chad, your golden retriever just died. It's really sad. <laughs> oh, it lived a good life. Oh, dude, that feels so good. Chad, your golden retriever died, but it lived a good life. <laughs> what? George died. And then you go, keep going. <laughs> You're like, keep going. Keep going. I love dirty talk. Like, you do. just throwing that out there. You know, I've tried it. I'm not that good at it. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I'm good at it either. I think I just love it. Yeah, I know I'm not good at it. I think I need to be freer. I mean, yeah. yeah I, I feel like you could let it flow. Oh, I let it rip. Yeah. 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 I've got, I, I think you are good at it. What I, makes you say you're not good? 
because one time I recorded myself and I listened back but with with the consent. It was we were both super into it, but well, super into it. we were into it, and then. <laughs> I, I listened to it back and I was like, "Whoa, Jesus, dude!" <laughs> I was like, "You sound like an idiot." I was like, "Will you shut up?" Um, but it's, uh, so I don't do that anymore. But no, I think it, it's it, I, it, I yeah, I do think I'm good but at it. it. Maybe I'm just judging my performance. But a lot. it also sucks to listen to yourself. Yeah, in any capacity. you're gonna, you're gonna judge it. I, I I just know mine's just very um, vanilla because it's just like, yeah, you like that? Cool. That's not vanilla. Saying there's yeah, a, you like that? There's a lot of power and meaning in that i guess you're asking you're saying do you like me you know yeah. that's that's very vulnerable yeah you like that you like that Does tell me <laughs> tell me i'm tan enough tell me i'm tan people enough. are shutting off yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sorry guys oh, got lost there for a second <laughs> Just, whoa dipped into my own little thing <laughs> that's why i go to meetings uh all right dude speaking of which i just want to you know throw some love out to the ladies i think gynecologist could be a lot better why do you say that i have a friend and she told me she had to go to six different gynecologists before she got an accurate diagnosis and what was going on with her really yeah she had vulvodynia what the hell is that i didn't know but i wrote it down i know what the vulva is that's the whole vagina well said dude thanks but the enthusiasm was powerful well whenever i know science i'll tell you what gets me fired up whenever i know science and whenever i know whenever i've seen a movie that you haven't seen oh really yeah that's nice dude because I'm, I'm i'm working on expanding my cultural knowledge dude you're like a machine at it oh yeah. thanks <laughs> i'm like whatever whatever movie it is i'm like like you've seen it right and you're like i haven't i'm like what i know i've missed a lot of classics no you haven't you know like every movie oh that's nice dude not every movie most of them except spinal tap that's nice Dude, I I came. Up, oh no, I'm gonna use this later. Sorry, I got I got uncomfortable with you complimenting, complimenting me. So Sorry, I railroaded it into nothing. Uh, but, oh, we, you were talking about gynecologists. No, that was it. I I just doctors will tell you that nothing's wrong, and I know I'm like a hypochondriac, so that's what I need to hear. But oftentimes, doctors will be like, "Nothing's wrong, nothing's wrong," and then something is wrong, mm -hmm. and and then it, so it just made me go down a rabbit hole, and I looked up like. 220,000 people die a year from medical mistakes. Right, yeah. And they think it's even more because hospitals are pretty reluctant to put down that it was their fault on like the paperwork. You know, that's the third third leading cause of death in America. Yeah. It's just doctors like effing it up. Well, I don't want to make people paranoid to go to the doctors. So go, 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 go. That's what I'm saying is go. But it's just crazy to me. Well, people put doctors on a pedestal. And they should be on a pedestal in a sense, but you got to remember that they're human beings. Yeah. They're having bad days too. They're getting ghosted. They are eating carbs sometimes and it's affecting them. So it's going to affect their performance. Yeah. Um, I remember I had something on my lip that I wanted to get checked out. And you, you just expect doctors to be at your service at all times. And I call my dentist and I'm like, hey, I, can you come check this out? And he's like, oh, Jerry, I'm on vacation. And I was like, I don't speak English. And he's like, oh, da, oh, da. And I was like, I got to check this out now. And he's like, I'm on vacation. So I had to wait like four days. Yeah, you don't vacation, dude. Yeah, I was like, you're a dentist. You stay in your office yeah. when something happens to me. Your vacation is when you get a charming patient like me and you get to work on my grill dog. Yeah, yeah. Doggy dog. Um. Dude, I, uh, yeah, that, that, but that makes me respect pilots a lot that they're normal people who mm -hmm. are fallible just like us. Yeah. But there hasn't been a crash, a deadly crash, commercial crash in America in 10 years. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like they're keeping it together a little bit. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. It is crazy when they're landing a plane, you're like, you're like, man, this is a huge fucking thing. Yeah. And they don't fuck it up yeah. barely ever. Yeah. They're like, we're coming in, dropping altitude, and uh, cool, smooth landing. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, a Stoker called me out for mentioning the Dao De Ching. I saw that. Was he calling you out, or was he, I? I don't know. I think he was. I think he was kind of calling me out. He's like, Chad's mentioned this four times in the last two episodes, and I just want to say to him, that's the only book I've read, so that's gonna be my reference. Yeah, I think for him it was like, yeah. I mean, that's the only book you need to read. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. I don't know. No, I, th I thought he was more like trying to say like, uh, like uh, this book must mean a lot to Chad. Oh, maybe. 
Cause, cause I read that comment too. I wasn't really offended. I just thought it was kind of funny. But, you know, maybe it's because it's me reading it. I'm, it's he it says my name. I like perk up. I'm like, but it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter at all. I know I sound uh, bitter now. That no, you <laughs> don't. Up. You, you, no, you don't. A funny. Uh, it is. Aside. No, you don't sound. You don't sound bitter. You almost never sound bitter. Oh, thanks. I know. I always worry I'm bitter. I am a little bit. Like I'm. I'm working on it with like gratitude, like just being less resentful and just grateful to right. people. Right. Yeah. It's getting a little easier though. Like you're right. Like practice does help. Like if you just yeah. practice the shit and you slow down your brain a little bit. Yeah. You can rework it. Well, it is so tough in this industry, especially. But then the more you read about, like I'm read, I'm listening to. I know I just said I've only read one book, but I'm listening to this book on Pixar. And the more you hear about all this stuff, teamwork makes the dream work. Baby, you know? let's go. Um, so, and you know, you see other comics and stuff, they get stuff and you're like, why, why are they getting this stuff? You know, and it's just like, there's enough food for everyone. I know, but I can be like a cunt where like someone like, like they get fired from something. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Dude, yeah. That's, like, I, I think everyone has that thought though. Yeah. I, I, there's, I, I don't think that... I, th I think that I think everyone has that thought, and the key is you need to recognize that thought, and you know, like you did with that tiger, just or the way uh, Anwar did with that horse, just, just knock, knock it, it out. out. Yeah, yeah, and then like someone will say something kind of like that I think is like dumb or that I don't agree with, and uh, the loudest voice in my head would be like, just want to say like, nerd, <laughs> shut up, geek. Yeah, you know. But like, how's that? Yeah. And then I'm glad I'm like mature enough now and like my brain slowed down enough from like meds and medication and therapy to just like put that thought away and just be like, hey, that's really chill, man. Yeah. And then like if I do have to like, if I do disagree, I can do it in a way that's like helpful and not like just like about hurting somebody's spirit. Yeah. Well, you, yeah, I think you, you realize that there's, there's no pot of gold at the end of that. Yeah. Rainbow gets you farther from the pot of gold yeah it gets you closer to the lucky charm guy doing blow yeah you're like wailing on this person emotionally and mentally and then like other people are running over and grabbing the gold and then you turn back and go hey that's my gold and yeah. they're like well you were too busy trying to like destroy this thing over here for yeah. for you to even get a, a whiff of it yeah yeah i'll have fantasies of like epic comebacks you know or like I'll, if someone if someone says this i'm gonna be like well actually you know E equals MC squared, boom. And but then you you play it out in your head, and you're like, then we're both gonna feel bad. Yeah, nothing good has come of that. Takes more power to let a jabroni live. Yeah, they, there's a French phrase for that. When you think of the comeback too late, I think it's "lay spirit de l'escalier." Hmm. Yeah. Oui. So I mean, it's bonjour. Yeah. Konichi. What was the bro? What is the translation? I think it's like a thought too late or something like that. Oh, nice. But I mean, it's so common that even the French came up with a phrase for it. Not even, but like, you know, it's universal. The French are wise. They know arguments and boning. Yeah. I like their style. Bone mots? Bone jour. A bone mot is a witty remark. Is everything cool in French start with the word bone? Yeah, my friend Reggie has the best joke ever. What? He's like, do you know what Bon Jovi translates to in oh, English? Right. Good Jovi. Yeah. I think I've said that on here before. It's just a killer line. I wanted to reference this about my dad, too. I didn't forget to bring it up. My dad has the best saying for people who complain a lot. Uh -huh. He goes, they're a moaner. <laughs> and he goes, he has two friends who, who, I guess, complain. I don't think they complain more than most people. Everyone complains. But my dad always goes, oh, he's one of the moan brothers. Yeah. He's a moaner. Yeah. I'm a moaner. That's uh, like, it's like in uh, Joker, spoiler alert again, when Robert De Niro's like, there's a lot of self-pity going on. And yeah. It would have been funny that like, you're a, kind of a moaner. You're a moaner. You're a moaner, Joker. You're a moaner. You're moaning. All right, what up, Stokers? My dog and I are big fans of the pod. Recently, we've fallen upon difficult and troubling times, though, and it has my stoke levels draining at an alarming rate. We've been boys for years, and more than that, we've been fishing bros and IPA aficionados together. Recently, though, my dog has hit it big on the gram, and to put it in other words, he's blowing up. I feel like he no longer has time for me now that he has so many influencer friends with super bronze bods and world record sized fish picks. I'm stoked for my bro, but how can I preserve our relation without holding him back from immense internet fame? Thanks, dudes. That's a bummer, man. Um, 
I feel for you, dude. I mean, uh, this. I think he's riding this wave right now. I I don't think in for you. I think you know against the art of letting go. You know, just let him ride this wave, and um, when he comes around, be a good friend. You know, be there for him. Uh, unless he's being egotistical, then maybe say something. Uh, but you know, I think he's gonna ride this wave, but eventually he's gonna come back. Yeah. And I think uh, you know when this kind of stuff happens to people. They probably have like a period of time where they're like, oh my God, I have all these followers right now. I'm going to go to freaking this club and hang out with influencers and stuff. But then eventually he'll realize that that's not what life is all about. That's not bringing him true happiness. And he's going to come back to his main dog. For sure. With, I think. I think that's true, dude. Like the fish is going on its journey right now, but it's right. going to return upstream to you one day. Yeah. Dude, it, it reminds me of, I mentioned him a week or two ago, the writer ta Coates. So he blew up. And then one of his friends did a story a lot like this for uh, NPR's This American Life. And he, he basically talked to ta about how like, he felt like he changed and how it made him kind of insecure being around him. And it, it was really interesting because you realize like ta did change. He did change a little bit. Like he got a little more bougie and stuff like that. But his friend also changed. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I think it can affect how you're acting sometimes. So, you know, try and monitor that as much as you monitor him and then the other thing that Tanahasi said to him that I thought was like pretty cool is he's like because they're both writers he's like yeah dude like I hang out with, he's like you hang out with like I forget who he says but like someone like Malcolm Gladwell or something he's like yeah. and then he's like yeah but dude Malcolm Gladwell's like not smarter than you yeah like he's like had a few hits and stuff but he's yeah. not smarter than you and like these guys that your boys taking fish picks with they're not better fishermen than you they're not no. cooler than you yeah like you guys are dogs for a reason he, yeah because you got good shit to offer and you're a cool dude and so i wouldn't let the optics of who he's hanging out with affect how you feel about yourself dude because you're a legit dude yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't blow up this friendship either you know just keep him in your squad uh let him do his thing and i think what's going to happen is he's going to go on this journey and then he's going to come back even more grateful to have you as his dog because he realizes that you're the true quality dog in his life. Yeah, and as his life changes, he's gonna want more people who really know knew him bef like when he was in the hills, not in the palace. Right. And, and that's gonna mean a lot to him. Yeah. I mean, look at LeBron, dude. With yeah. like Maverick Carter, he's got like his his closest buddies or his his childhood buddies because yeah. they're they're you know through thick and thin. And yeah. I think you you got to prove it now through the thick. You've been there through the thin. Now just be there through the thick. Yeah. And then at the end of it, you guys are going to fucking have a nice time, dude, because you're going to get some access. Because you know what? He's going to have some cool shit coming his way, and he's going to want to share that. Yeah. And it's going to be fun to share with you. And then you guys are going to get to experience that stuff together, and you'll get to yeah. meet all these tan fisher guys who sound legit, but not yeah. more legit. Yeah, so in the meantime, dude, keep landing some huge marlin. Maybe you'll land a Dorado, make some fire ceviche, throw some lime in there, and eat up, dude. Yeah, for sure. Catch a killer whale, man. Yeah. But catch and release with the killer whale. Yeah. It's not a mount fish. Catch the killer whale with good vibes, say what up, and then let it go on its way. Maybe you're not allowed to fish mammal. I know they serve dolphin at some places. Oh, that's a bummer. Yeah. You just see that on the menu and you're like... In America? You're like, okay, so you just killed the intellectual equivalent of an eight-year-old? Do you think that's okay? Yeah. Restaurant tour? Yeah. This thing was surfing like eight hours ago. Yeah. When I took the... Uh, Catalina Flyer out here They were riding on the side of the boat Yeah Dear Savants of Stoke New Stoker here I dig the pod so much Dudes Anyways to the quest Me and my lady friend Go way to high school And have kept it in, in touch Throughout college I dig this chick And wonder why we never dated We get along Same interests Same beliefs Etc I have popped that scary question Of why haven't we dated She quickly said I don't know You're not my type it's been a few years and we still chill and hang on the reg and it seems more and more that our feelings might be mutual for each other. So what do I do here, dudes? Do I shoot my shot and get shot down a second time or do I sit idly by and enjoy the friendship we have? I'm at a total loss, dude. Thanks for getting me amped on life and raising my stoke daily, dudes. Ross. So he asked her out already? Once, a while back, but he thinks that now the, the feelings will be reciprocated. Did he say how much time? I think a couple years. Oh, dude, I think I'd get back in there. Yeah, dude. You don't know until you ask. Yeah. But the thing I wouldn't do is burning up years of your time harboring feelings. Yeah. 
just make sure you do squats before I oftentimes when I have to make a you know something that takes a lot of nerves I do leg day because I get those fire juices going walk in there proudly and say what up do you want to get ice cream that was great what is up legends I am a current college bro who has recently gotten into your podcast gotta say they're truly epic my question to you bros is this I played lax in the high school but broke my back which kind of threw a wrench in my college playing plans and I lost a lot of offers nevertheless I put my nose to the grindstone and worked super hard in PT and training to work back to my former glory I was walking on to the D1 team in my college when I found out I had broken my spine again and this time there would be no coming back Damn. I feel like I lost yeah I'm sorry dog I feel like I lost a solid group of bros on my journey and the stoke has been pretty low because now I feel like an expat with no home and nowhere to belong. I'd love the dude's advice. I'd like to add something else to my friends. There's an amazingly cute, smart, funny girl at my college, practically the totes package, that I randomly run into at times. We always make eyes at each other and smile, and I get the vibe she's into me, and I'm deaf into her. The splash is in the pond is the splash in the pond is this i don't know don't know her name or who who she is. How do I approach her to get her name and cuff the girl of my dreams? Well, dude, I like how you're already kind of working past the issue and looking to other things to get stoked on, you yeah. know, like a potential relish. Uh, and I appreciate that you work so hard to get your back ready and that I'm sorry you had that setback. But, you know, like Phil Knight was like a college runner, but what he's going to be remembered for is starting Nike. So you could have your big thing that's defining in your future. And I think with your industrious attitude, it's definitely coming. And with this gal, I think you just got to walk up to her and say, hey, I'm Swiss. He signed it Swiss and say, Hey, I'm Swiss. What's up? I think that's it. And then from there, you that just, was fire, you just roll with that it. That got me fired up. I mean, what else is there to say? I, I want to go to Dairy Queen now. Just go, Hey, hey, I'm Swiss. How's it going? Hey, do you mind if I bother you for a second? That's always a good one. Yeah. Hey, do you mind if I bug, do you mind if I bug you for a second? You know what they always say? They don't always say anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, dude, I would, you know what? I always, whenever, Whenever I get uh, fearful or, you know, uh, I'm, first off, I'm sorry that you're going through this. It's a tough situation, but I always try to have the mindset that anything that happens, it's working in my favor. No matter whether it is or it yeah. isn't. If you have that mindset, like, th this is my path. Everything that happens is something that is happening in my favor. Even though it may look like the worst disaster in the world at the moment, just know that it is a stepping stone to great success in whatever field or mindset or whatever thing that may be. Whatever direction you're headed. Yeah, so, you know, I, I totally uh, I feel for your situation, my dog, but um, I would just look at this as a stepping stone towards a new path that's going to be even more epic, like you were saying with the Nike guy. You know, maybe this is maybe you want to explore the arts. Maybe you want to explore entrepreneurship. Maybe you want to build a bridge. I don't know. Maybe you want to like go like you know be a riverboat captain yeah. in Idaho Falls. Yeah. And know the river like the back of your hand. Yeah. And be like, oh, that rock's a little fun to bump off of. But yeah. Don't go too fast because you flip. Right. Maybe you just want to take a raft down the Mississippi River like Huck Finn. Yeah. This is a fresh Make start some for fucking you. Fucking friends on that trip. Yeah. Aaron, how are you doing? Uh, how do you mean? Uh, just in general. Oh, dude, talk about that weirdo. Oh, yeah, I got a weird text out of nowhere. It said, uh, I'll read it to you uh, in its entirety. Let's see. This is pretty cuckoo bananas. Hi, Aaron. Apologies for the message out of the blue. I'm Ben. I'd like to speak to you about purchasing my home address. Uh, do I have the right person? Some guy just messaged him. was like, yo, I want to buy your house. That's like the beginning of the movie Enough with J-Lo. Whoa. That guy turns out to be a psycho, dude. People who do stuff like that. Yeah, but he was also the rocketeer, dude. Respect. For sure, uh, for sure. Thank. Um, yeah, this is weird. Were you looking to sell your house? No, I just bought it like a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. But he blocked the dude. But I'm like, that's kind of a bold move because the guy knows where you live. So he could just yeah. show up and knock and be like, did you block me? You're freaking him out. You hurt my feelings. Did you block yeah. me? <laughs> well, oh, am I freaking you out? My bad, dude. It's either that or, or I text him back and fuck with him. And then he comes to my house and kills me. So, I mean, like... You could just say it's not for sale. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Even, yeah I'd, even engaging at you all. You don't want to engage in a dialogue with this I don't, dude. I want him to think, oh, maybe I did have the wrong number. Uh, you, you don't want to do that. Or you could be aggressive. Eat a dick, dude. It's not for sale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
You need a hot bowl of dicks. Yeah, you just get hammered and you write <laughs> something to him. You're like, bro, you think I would ever sell you my house? You're a clown, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, fuck, dude. Yeah, but, but he's like a really genuine. I'm definitely going to buy your house. <laughs> well, he's like a really genuine, sweet guy. And he's like, hey, man, I just would really like to purchase your house. Eat a hot bowl of dicks. <laughs> what? That's motivating, dude. That would send me on a journey of like getting enough purchasing power to make sure I made you eat those dicks yourself. Yeah. Metaphorically. I'd spoon feed you those dicks <laughs> in escrow. I uh, just want to start off by saying I've been following you guys for a while now and I love the pod and gram content. I recently went bleached for the reef and got a lawnmower 2.0 and got both of my domes have never looked more fresh. Oh, fire, dude. Thank you, dude. Please keep me anonymous. Anyways, I'll get right to it. It's a long one. I'm in my final year at college and I've been on and off with this one girl since sophomore year. It started off as just hooking up casually, but then transformed into a relationship. We've broken up and have gotten back together about three times since then. And we're currently on that BF GF page again. But recently I've had feelings of not wanting to be around her. I'm not trying to be an asshole because I do genuinely care for her, but I had a realization that maybe our personalities don't match. She's very loud in public and doesn't mind bringing attention in herself and has even gone so far as yelling at guys for staring at her for a little too long when we're together. I'm more laid back and generally don't like to be the center of attention, especially in public situations involving strangers. She also has a tendency to talk over me in group conversations, which really gets on my nerves, mainly because I never try to do that to anyone, especially her. Also, she recently almost got into a fist fight with a guy at a bar for touching her shoulder and asking if she had a boyfriend which eventually got her kicked out. I was on the other side of the bar with my boy at the time and essentially got my night ruined as I had to apologize to her friend group and leave with her. This is not something I want to deal with constantly because it happens enough to the point where I generally don't want to be around her in social settings, praying she doesn't cause a scene. And when I tell her something like, hey, I just want to be with the guys tonight, she ends up annoyed and it becomes another thing I have to deal with. So recently I've been lying to her saying stuff like, oh, I got too fucked up to come over or telling her I'm not going to a party where I am so she doesn't come and I just have time with the boys. Does this make me an asshole? I seriously do care about her, but there are points where I can't stand being around her. What do I do? We have shared some magical moments together where I think to myself, this is the one I want to be with, but she does crazy shit enough for me to rethink those times and put more weight into the bad than the good. I am just not ready for a girlfriend, or is this girl just not the one for me? Please help, bros. My dog, I think you answered the question with that quesh. I mean, it doesn't sound like it's a good fit. Yeah, dude, I, uh, I agree with Chad. Yeah. I mean, I... I, and I, I totally understand that feeling where you, you have these special moments and you go back on them and you're like, oh, but I can't give that up. But then I think if you look at the bigger picture, if you're at a place where you're actively ignoring her and coming up with, with excuses not to hang out with her and she's causing trouble for you socially and uh, she talks over him, is that what you said? Yeah. Stuff like that. Then, uh, you know, I think you got to rip that Band-Aid off and I think... I'm going to venture a guess, but I think you'll feel much better when you do. Yeah, dude. If it was just the talking over you thing, I'd be like, okay, talk to her about that. That's something yeah. she can work on. But she's doing so many things that are too much to deal with mm -hmm. and that and that don't seem like easily fixable. It sounds like she needs to do some pretty serious work on herself. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't – and it's just not – the right fit yeah yeah i i think it's it, i think you're not an asshole at all i think you sound no. like a really nice guy yeah and uh you're a little in over your head with this girl and you know you can say goodbye kindly and with yeah. love but and i know people like that they're charming and they're charismatic and they can fill you full of life but she doesn't have it regulated enough. She doesn't have control of the bull. The bull's got control of her. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to go along for that ride because you're going to get, you're just going to be an externality. Yeah. Um, oh, what was I going to say? God damn it. Uh, my dog. Oh, I forgot it. What were you talking about? You were talking about the bull. Like just that she doesn't have control of her chaos, really. Yeah, and this is what I was going to say. I think you need to start, in the most respectful way, putting yourself first a little bit. Um, because you got to look at, if you're not happy, then it's just going to be an unpleasant experience for everyone. And I think you got to be in charge of your own happiness and take control of that. And if there's someone in your life that's dragging you down and making you feel down in the, in the dumps, like you're at the bottom of the well and you can't get out and you want to get pokey, I think you got to say, you know what, I got to put myself first in this situation. 
So this was a really nice experience, but I'm going to go fish for marlin. Yeah, let's get you on your way to Sweetfin, Pokey. Yeah. Yeah. All right, what up, Chad and JT? I wanted to preface this by saying your pod is super hype and is my favorite to listen to by far. Thanks, man. So basically, my stoke levels have been super low for the past couple of months because I've had to be on the school and work grind almost nonstop. When I do get to hang with the boys, it's always the same stuff, just pounding brews, smoking up, and going to parties. But I never feel stoked about any of it. I feel like I do the same things every day, and I'm not moving forward. I guess my question is, how do I raise my stoke levels when I don't have much of anything to be stoked on at the moment? Appreciate you, boys. Ian. My dog. Uh, sounds like you're stuck in a rage or rut. Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes you can rage too much, and when raging becomes your whole life, then you lose the stoke for the rage. I think you need to find, uh, you need to diversify your bonds. And by that, I mean, you need to find other things to do in your life. You know, some extracurricular activities, find a mission for yourself so that you can earn those celebrations. So it's not just what you do. You know, I think for me personally, I think my key to happiness is when when I'm making progress, when I'm learning things, when I'm developing myself and becoming a better dude. So... I think if you can find a mission for yourself that you can dedicate yourself to, whether it's in the workforce or something else, I think that will expand your life and make you much happier. Excellent. I also think, my dude, that you're just worn out. You know, you've been on the school and work grind nonstop, and then every weekend you're getting after it partying. That's all stuff that takes a lot of energy. And I think you probably like partying but just the repetition of it has made it feel like a chore to you. So I think if you just take one weekend, like after you hear this, you just take that weekend, just for yourself, just force yourself to stay in, watch some movies, read some shits, maybe you know do some self-love. Um, the, yeah, and then just, uh, just recharge your batteries. And mm-hmm. then I think you'll go into the next weekend and be like, oh yeah, I do like actually hanging out with my boys and getting after a little bit. It's just, it's just, you, 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 get, you need variety. All right, last question. You and JT rock. I wish I was like you. I'm a 50-year-old bro, and I just realized I've never partied in my entire life. All I've done is work and eat a lot of doo-doo. Can you help me? I want to learn how to party. I even have a cool biz now that won't work either. If you're a real bro, please help a fellow bro to no longer be a loser. Peace, Sean. I mean, uh. dude. What do you want? You want the shortcut to getting after it? Because we all know what that is. Just go out, get hammered, you know? Or do you want to really know how to really dig deep and party? There's only one important step to take, and that's the first one. Just get in there. Get in there. And don't have ideas of what it means to party, because it's different for everybody. And you figure that out one party at a time. You go to a party, you feel awkward. You stay at that party. You sit in that discomfort. How do you get invited to the party? People at work, you join some rec ball leagues, you just go to bars. And slowly but surely, you discover how you party. What makes you, you at the party? Are you the dancing guy, are you the conversation guy, are you the guy who's good at mixing drinks? You figure it out. I can't really add anything to that. I mean, that was perfect. Really? Yeah, I would just say on top of that, don't eat doo-doo. Yeah, stop eating doo-doo. That's going to make you feel terrible. Yeah, doo-doo's no good. And uh, he says... <laughs> A business that sucks, is that what he said? He says, I even have a cool biz now, but that won't work either. Yeah. Uh, a little He's more, got a cool biz? I don't know. I, a little more optimism. I mean, you know, put some heart and soul into your biz while you're pounding beer bongs, dude. Um, maybe roll up a fat blunt and do your taxes. Combine the two. Try things out. Be spontaneous. You know? Get a, get a, a tin of skull throw in a fat dap and think of a new marketing plan. And then if the thought of eating doo-doo comes to your mind again, say no. No more doo-doo. Stay out, doo-doo. I'm giving you homework, bro. I want you to go to a bar that has a dance floor and I want you to get on that floor and I want you to dance by yourself for three songs. Maybe if you're looking for a move best one to go to is hip gyrations drink in hand hands up gyrate your hips let everyone know that you may be 50 years old but you can still move those hips people will talk to you 
If you hip gyrate, they will talk to you. People are attracted to freedom. So just try and work towards being free. And you can't get there in a day. So don't put that pressure on you. We underestimate, we overestimate what we can do in one year and underestimate what we can do in five years. Bill Gates talking about fucking raging. Mm. That's what the fuck he was talking about. Mm -hmm. That's what the fuck I'm talking about when I talk to Bill Gates. I talk to him about raging. Windows 95, that celebration, when they were all, all those geeks were up there getting after Steve it. Steve Bomber, dude. Just raging. The bomber? Yeah. Bill Gates is worth something of a billion dollars, and he gyrated to his hips, and so can you, dude. That freaking nerd got down on the dance floor, and now he's serving up cricket protein for the world. He's a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot of respect for him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right, Chad, who is your beef of the week? Uh, my beef of the week is the shark that attacked Mick Fanning. Um, this is a few years ago. Okay, thank God. He's okay. Good. The White Lightning is okay. That's his nickname. Rip Curl. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to take you guys on the scene. 2000, I believe, 15, J-Bay. That's Jeffrey's Bay in South Africa. Mick Fanning was out there in a heat with Julian Wilson. It was the finals of the J Bay competition. I believe it was the Billabong Pro. Mick Fanning's sitting out there just being the white lightning, being like, you know, I'm the fastest surfer in the water. I know I can crush this heat even though I'm going up against Julian, who is a prodigy and looks really good. But then, unbeknownst to him, a freaking shark comes up and pulls on his leash, and you see a fin come out of the water on the live webcast, and you see a fin come out of the water, and Nick McFan gets pulled down a little bit, and then you see him freak out, and then he gets pulled underwater, and then you see Mick Fanning, fist flying. He's attacking the shark. Whoa. He's in full karate mode, Muay Thai, Jiu-Jitsu, freaking uh, Tai Chi. He is attacking this shark, just beating the fuck out of it. And he came away unscathed. Dude, no podcast in history has talked more about human versus beast That's right. fighting than this one today. That's right. Put it in the Hall of Fame, dudes. And Mick, it's going to be your photo, dude. So my beef was, was with that shark, although I do love sharks. There's a huge stigma around sharks, and I support them, and I love them. But this shark in particular, he messed up the finals, dude. And uh, and then Julian Wilson showed his true colors as a epic bro. You know what Julian Wilson did when this shark attacked McFanning? He recognized what was going on. He paddled toward the shark. Whoa! He's like, I'm gonna help out my dog, and he was paddling towards the shark, working his lats, and then the shark swam away because he got socked in the nose. That's what's up. So that's my beef. What's your beef? Dude, my beef of the week is a personal one. So Chad and I are uh, working on a project and uh, we're at an office, which is kind of weird to be at an office, but yeah. we dig it, yeah. you know? It's got good vibes. And today everyone came dressed in Halloween costumes. And then there was a vote to pick what was the best Halloween costume. And then I look at what my outfit is described as and it says 80s bro. So for a little context, Chad and I are the biggest bros at this office. So that's not my costume. I'm Jane Fonda, aerobics instructor from the 80s. They just wrote me as 80s bro, which was super demeaning. Mm. Dude, it was straight up racist. Mm. I was like, 80s bro? I didn't make a big deal about it because, you know, you got to keep your chin up and just, just keep, you know, don't let them see you sweat. But I added, I was, I was about to cross out bro, but I realized that'd be too dramatic of a move. You know, it'd be like, I hate my own self. Mm. So I just wrote 80s bro dance instructor. And added that. But I did not like how people just took my costume at superficial value and were just like, oh, he's a bro, so he's being an 80s bro. You yeah. know? Yeah. I was being a, it's messed up. Dude. I was being a 2019 bro in a costume. It's messed up, dude. People judged you. It's like, yeah, dude. It's like, yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. Can I just be a dance instructor? Yeah. Can it just say dance instructor? Yeah. Aaron, like, what's up, dude? Yeah, what's up? With what? <laughs> I mean, but like... Everything. Like, did I get, like, discriminated on a little bit? Disrespected? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, yeah, dude. Dude. Oh, yeah. If I didn't have bleach blonde hair and uh, this voice and just that face that I make where I'm like, what? And, and that cool vibe. Oh, dude. And that stoke. Oh, man, you're spinning it positive. Thank you, dude. Because I was, I was feeling so negative about it, you know? Well, bro. But sometimes what, it feels like people aren't seeing the whole me. Well, bro is what you make it. That's so true, dude. You could be a bro, but you have, you know, but the only reason they think you're a bro is because you have a cool vibe. Yeah. But then you, you know, throw out some Edgar Allan Poe, and they're like, damn, bro, this guy knows Poe. And that rhymes. Um, all right, Chad, who is your babe of the week? My babe of the week is Ed Catmule. Ed Catmule is a freaking dude who is the president of Pixar and Disney Animation. Pixar Animation, Disney Animation. I'm listening to his book right now, and he is just a beast. You know, he is a guy who had a dream. I'm going to make an animated movie with computers, and I'm going to realize this dream through thick and thin. I'm just going to be a freaking bat in a cave, and I'm going to come and reach the light, and then I'm going to turn into a dove or an eagle and soar high with a bug's life in Toy Story. Um, yeah, he just tells a story about you know how he started with his dream, and then he started working with Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs would come at him hard, and he'd be like, look, I got this great idea. I'm going to take your job. It's going to be awesome. And he'd be like, you know what, Steve? I don't think that's the best idea. I have my vision. I want to work with you, but you know, don't just take my job. Um, and he, uh, he stuck it out, stayed in the thick of it and then came out with Toy Story and then just dominated. And then he's just on a path, but he's been analyzing his path through thick, you know, um, you know, just constantly learning, constantly readjusting. What do I need to do better? What can, what values do we have as a company? You know, what's working, what's not, who do we need to can? Um, and, uh, I think one of the most epic things he was talking about is he, he's like, you know, people in this industry, they preach about the importance of ideas. What reigns supreme is ideas. Story is most important. And he's like, I get that. But I'm going to argue that people are most important. It's the team. Because where do ideas come from? People. Yep. So he just seems like a really solid, good dude who's brought us some epic hits. I mean, Toy Story, that changed my world, dude. I looked at, I never looked at my Slinky the same way. So, Ed Catmule, you're a babe. Dude, uh, Hampton Young has the best Toy Story joke where yeah. he says he has a friend who invited him over oh, right. one time and like, fuck day Hulk Hogan doll. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And then he said he said he said his friend would fuck him all the time. And then he was like, he's like, Can you imagine if Toy Story was real? And the Hulkster <laughs> just walks over and everybody goes, Hey, we gotta kill this fucking kid. <laughs> <laughs> it might be my favorite joke of all time. Yeah, I remember it that. It might be my favorite joke of all time. <laughs> he's into some weird shit, and he's a freak. The Hulk. <laughs> yeah. Dude. The Hulk, we gotta kill this fucking kid, brother. <laughs> yeah. <Just> um <laughs> That's a dark toy store. Yeah. Um Dude, my babe of the week is this guy at the gym tonight. So I went to uh, this gym to box and just like hit the bag. And then um, we were doing some rounds near each other. And I went up to him and I was like, hey, dude, do you want to put on your music? Because I was playing like R&B. Like I had Brian McKnight back to one playing, uh -huh. which is like a super romancy song and not really something you'd box to, but it gets me hyped. And then he was like, I'm like, hey, dude, I know my music's kind of weird. Do you want to put on your stuff? He goes, nah, dude, it's nice. Good change of pace. And he's like, and be weird, dude. Be we, be you, be weird. And I was like, thanks, man. So I went back to hitting the bag, and he got me motivated because he was doing extra bag work, not taking breaks in between the bell. And so he, I did a couple extra rounds because of him. And then as I was leaving, I was just like, you know what? I like to spar on Thursdays at Muay Thai, but I couldn't make it on time today. So I just was like, hey, dude, do you want to get in the ring and spar? Uh, is that weird? He's like, no, let's do it. And then we just went in there, and we sparred for a couple rounds. And he, he totally uh, bested me. But he, he was chill about it. He didn't throw too much. He was a little cocky afterwards. But hey, you got to be like that. He was, he was stinging me. And uh, I got a really good workout, and I was dying afterwards. And then he's like, hey, dude, it's only weird if, like, I've never seen you before in the gym and you ask. It's like your first day and you ask to spar people. And I was like, yeah, that is weird. If it's your first day in the gym and you're like, hey, man, you want to get in the ring and fight? Yeah. Yeah, that's too much. But we had seen each other in there a bunch. And so he knew I was, like, mellow. And we just had a really nice time uh, punching each other. So uh, it was really cool. And he's just a nice guy. He teaches Pilates. I might go check out his class now. Oh, nice. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Just a good dude. Did he land any on your face? 
Uh, not too much. We were going pretty soft and mostly focusing on the body. But yeah, he hit me with a couple jabs and stuff. Yeah. yeah. He was just—he had good defense. Like every time I'd poke him in one of his arms, the wherever the opening was, he would—he would slot in a punch. Yeah. And I realized I was like, oh, this guy is just technically better than me. Yeah. yeah. But I think if I keep working, I'll—I'll I'll be able to get some shots on him. How long have you been boxing? A couple years now. Yeah. Didn't mean anything when I fought that only six, only a seven couple hipster. years now. Yeah, just a couple years. I did it a little bit when I was uh, like in my teens. And I did karate growing up, but yeah, just a couple of years. Mm -hmm. But I feel good right now, and yeah. it's fun throwing kicks because it takes some of the gives my shoulders some relief, and I feel like it tones up the body more. Yeah, I enjoyed fake sparring with you at the office today. That was fun. Yeah, yeah. It's just a great feeling, right? When you're dancing yeah. around throwing shots. Yeah. And I, I hugged you after we did it once because I really feel close to people after I, I do. I was it. trying to yeah. go with the grab that they do. Yeah, you were clinching. Is that what it's called? Yeah. I uh, yeah I, I've never really been. I, I attracted to the sport but every, every time i kind of do it i'm like this is fun yeah it jacks you up uh all right chad who is your legend of the week my legend of the week is my new apartment congrats my dog thank you thank you thank you uh yeah i, I signed the lease on a new apartment i'm moving in around thanksgiving it has most thing i'm fired up about is it has a balcony with ample sunnage so there's gonna be lots of sun coming on me at all times uh, it's a brand new building. I got fire appliances. I got in unit washer and dryer, which I'm stoked on, and central air. So, um, all the things that I envisioned for my apartment have uh, come to life. So, I'm really stoked on it. I can't wait to bronze on that balcony. Maybe I'll put a hammock out there. Maybe I'll put a table out there. Maybe I'll put a grill out there. I don't know. The possibilities are endless. So, that's why my legend of the week is my new apartment. Love it, dude. I'm so jacked to come visit you there. That'll be cool. And it's been a good search, and, like, it, the place looks badass, man. It's cool, yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'll get a dog. Yeah. What kind of doggy? I mean, I, I love golden retrievers. I want a golden retriever. That's nice, dude. Aaron, what kind of dog do you think I should get? Dude. You're pretty active. Yeah. Super active. But you're not home all that much. Right. You're never home. Shit. That's tough. I'm thinking after this project we're working on, I'll be home more, but... No, you won't. Yeah. You're yeah. going to be even busier. Damn it. So you might want to go smaller than Retriever. I can't do that, dude. I can't do it. Aaron, you know I can't I, say it to him. It's not my place, I, but I appreciate you coming in with it. You I know what I really like uh, as a beagle? Oh, dude. Cute dog. But you what? know what the thing about beagles are? They're explorers. Yeah, that's true. Oh, dude, I love... Oh, um, wow. That's be, cute. My dad had a beagle. They're cuties. Uh, like a pocket beagle is, is a smaller version of one. It's pretty cool. But they're explorers, so they... They, they get lost venture. sometimes. Yeah. They venture, yeah. But I, I think a pocket one's not going to venture as far. It might just go to, like, the next floor down. Yeah. Plus, you get, like, they got tracking beacons and shit now. Yeah. Dude, yeah. my dad's girlfriend's dog is a golden retriever. Sweaty, slobbering, lovely guy. Um, he just ruined my jeans one day and I'm still pissed, but, uh, he just goes trash pillaging at night. They just let him run away and they're like, and then my dad's like, Hey, we got to find the dog. And then like two miles away, he's just in someone's backyard and they're like, Wilson, get in the car. Yeah. I'm like, this guy just roams free. Yeah. yeah. It's like a, it's like in a gang, get a one man car. gang. Wilson, JT Wilson's gone again. He's, he's dumpster diving. We think he's behind the restaurant plunk. Come with me. I'm like, how about you just keep the dog in the yard? But my dad's like, come on, he needs to run. It's good for him. Yeah. yeah. I like how he's encouraging him to be free. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't want to confine a golden retriever to an apartment. That seems cruel. But maybe you'll make time for it. And, and the places we're working are going to let you bring your dog. Right, yeah. right, yeah. And, don't, and you're going to train your dog. Because, like, dude, when I was in, an office manager and people would bring in their wildling dogs and they would just like thrash phones and piss and shit everywhere. And I'd be like, hey, Chief just uh, ripped up another phone. And they'd be like, Chief? No, Chief never does stuff like that. I'm like, Chief does that every day. <laughs> you gotta open your eyes to the reality of who your dog is. Yeah. All right. I was always like, you know what? I'm just gonna bring like my most fucked up family member who's got like the worst problems. I'm just gonna bring him into work one time. Yeah. Be like, what, what? What's wrong with Max? Just let him do what he wants. He's a good guy. <laughs> like Max stole all of our spoons again, you know, to do heroin off of them. I'm like, oh, not Max. He doesn't do stuff like that. Um, all right. Dude, my legend of the week is uh, inspired by Mick Fanning. 
It's Christine Zanawi. Remember we looked at this lady like a week ago? She is a shark whisperer. Right. Like legit can communicate with sharks in ways that no other human can. I mean, is it verbal? Is it nonverbal? It's probably nonverbal. She um, can like tickle their bellies and rub their backs with like tiger sharks, scary looking uh, creatures. And she's just a total piece with them. She wears chain mail, but you got to watch the video on YouTube. Just say woman is a shark whisperer, type that in. And she's like petting them. And then the coolest part is they get hooks stuck in their mouths from like bad fishermen. And she started pulling the hooks out. And once she did it to a couple sharks, more sharks started showing up with hooks in their mouth. So she's literally their resident dentist. I mean, how cool is like, how do you even get into that walk of life where that's what you're doing? You just, you just follow your bliss. Get out there. She gets out there and it's, it's unbelievable just watching her tickle a shark's belly. Yeah. She like, she like works them into it. She like pets them. Then she just shoves her whole arm up their mouth. Yeah. And they're like, ah, oh, I love this. Yeah, she's helping. She's literally sticking her arm in the most dangerous place it could go. Yeah. And so far, they're trusting her. She hugs sharks. Very cool. That's awesome. Uh, Chad, what is your quote of the week? Okay. Rafiki comes in hot in Lion King when he's given Simba some tough love. And he goes, you know, he's like trying to convince Simba to come back become the rightful king that he is and he goes oh yes the past can hurt what was this oh yes the past can hurt but from the way i see it you can either run from it or learn from it nice. that's from rafiki rafiki it's hard to look back well i don't remember it so i'm good <laughs> mine is from the movie ransom with mel gibson we were talking about it somewhere and uh Someone, he's like a rich uh, airline CEO <laughs> and uh, someone kidnaps his son and then he just decides to take matters into his own hand. I can't remember if this is before or after he says, look, I've got $2 million and you're never going to see any of it. I'm putting this money towards whoever captures you. So get used to running. But this might be before he makes that call. So he's talking to the guy who has his son and who is obviously a psychopath on the phone. And uh, he goes, is it dark where you're calling from? Got the shades down? Kind of like a cellar, right? Like a cave? Well, you better get used to that. You better, get, you better get used to crawling in the dark for the rest of your days because I'm gonna get the best group of manhunters in this country and I'm gonna dedicate my life to tracking you down. And then the guy's like, hey, hey, get your head out of your ass. You think you can threaten me, huh? Who do you think you're dealing with? Give me the money. Fuck you and your two million. Don't you understand English, you useless piece of shit? No money, none. Let me tell you something. You think you're suffering now, huh? You got no idea what suffering is. If I don't get the cash in one hour, this kid is dead. I don't get my son back. I mean, real soon, you better kill yourself because when I catch up with you, I'm gonna take my goddamn time. By the time we're finished, you're gonna wish you weren't born. I'll have your head on a fucking pike. Do you understand me? Fuck you. I'll fucking kill him right now. You kill him, you kill yourself, you motherfucker. Give me back my son. And then he drops the phone. He goes, ah, ah. Dude, he had to play hardball with these kidnappers. I like it. I so dig it. It's as, uh, it's as intense as some of his later phone calls. Yeah. Oh, dude. Oh, dude. Good ref. Yeah. Controversh. Controversh. Hashtag alcoholism. Thank you for bringing your big hog energy to this. Yeah, dude. For real, dude. You're welcome. Um, do you have a quote? Yeah. Of the, do you have a line for getting, getting after, after it? it? Let's ask Aaron. I love that, dude. Dude, that'd be cool if people say that. Like if people, hey, let's ask Aaron. And yeah. say, All right, I'm down to party. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's deserving. Uh, mine is, uh, you know how people say, and then I cried like a bitch? Mm -hmm. Let's change it up. Cried like a beast. Legend. Animals cry. In touch with the emotion. Yeah, animals cry. I cried like a fucking beast last night, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude, my grandma said something kind of rude to me, and I just got home, thought about it for an hour, and I just cried like a mm -hmm. beast. Then the boys hit me up, and I was like, let's ask Aaron. Let's ask Aaron, dude. Did you just bring a 30 rack to this? Let's ask Aaron, dude. That makes me want to cry like a beast, dude. Oh, Randy, did you come in with a beer bong and a freaking volcano? The throwback, dude. Let's ask Aaron. Let's ask Aaron, dude. Dude, did you come here to rage? Let's ask Aaron. Pedro, did you just fly in from San Francisco? Let's ask Aaron. Dude, is this herpes on my dong? Let's ask Aaron. <laughs> dude. Dude, it burns when I pee. Let's ask Aaron. 
Dude, did I get too fucked up last night and take a shit on my ex-girlfriend's dad's bed? Let's ask Aaron. Dude, I fucked my whole Kogan doll and he started talking to me. Let's ask Aaron. Dude, did I purchase an assault rifle and try to assassinate the president? Let's ask Aaron. Dude, did I wrestle the president for the keys to the nukes? It's us, Aaron, dude. Dude, we heard that sometime with the there's a philosophical thing where for the nukes that they want to put the keys inside of a guy so that the guy who activates the nukes has to kill someone before he does it so he knows what he's doing. He's killing people. Yeah, I can see that. Let's ask Aaron. Do you think that's a good idea? <laughs> let's ask Aaron. Should we nuke these people? The answer is probably no, but let's ask Aaron. Aaron, are you ever down for nuking? Yeah. No. Your hard pass on the nuke? Hard pass on the nuke. In fact, not cool with previous nukes. Oh, dang. Dude, it would be pretty funny if we got to a point with guns. I'm not even trying to be political here. I'm just having fun with an extrapolation. If we got to a place with guns where, like, you could buy nukes, everyone's like, don't take my nukes from me. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I got to protect myself from the tyranny of a irresponsible government. I need my nuclear warheads. You take my nukes, what's next? You take my house, you take my liberties, you take my freedom. You want to take my nukes? Yeah, you want to take my nukes over my dead keys, dude. Let's just, let's just hypothetical-wise, all right? You say I should have less than 20 nukes. Where does it end? Sometime, then you're going to say I shouldn't have 15 nukes. Then, I, then 10 nukes? Now you got one nuke? Now you're going to take my nuke. How are we going to fight back the government? We don't have no nukes. Aaron, you've you told pry, me... You could pry my nuke out of my glowing dead hand. <laughs> yeah, out of my radioactive palm. I'm holding plutonium right now in my palm because that is my God-given right. All right? And yeah, I got no pubes left. I can't even manscape no more. But I'm protected. I have a phrase for getting after it, too, while we're... It hit us, apropos dude. Apropos of today, let's go ring some doorbells and get that candy. Oh, oh, it's Halloween, dude. Yeah, yeah, it's Halloween. Happy I guess Halloween. we're not big Halloween guys, but I love that phrase. Jump wham, jump wham. Enjoy right, Halloween, guy. guys. All right, dude. Good talking with you, man. Yeah, that was fun. Aaron, good talking with you, brother. Yeah. Boom clap. Leave some reviews, Stokers. Thank you. Yeah, leave some reviews. I love those. And I'm always comparing us to other podcasts. <laughs> Gilbert Gottfried has the same amount of reviews. He probably deserves it. He's a legend.